When we are installing a new aftermarket car audio system, we are oftentimes installing new speakers that might be a slightly different size. In order to get the best performance out of these new speakers, we gotta make sure they're installed correctly, and that means making custom adapters. Custom adapters not only allow us to perfectly match the cutout size of the aftermarket speaker, making sure that we don't have any air leaks, they also allow us to space the speaker away from the sheet metal of the door, closer to the hole in the door panel pass through allowing for better sound quality. By making these adapters custom and more thick, these are a lot stronger and more robust, which will lead to them not being as likely to resonate. But most importantly, by making custom adapters, we can oftentimes fit a much larger speaker into a factory location that might not otherwise allow for that speaker. Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mark, welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show where together we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. I'm currently working on installing a full car audio system and I wanted to take you guys along on the ride for this step of the process of making these custom rings. So here we have our factory speaker that we've taken out of the vehicle and here we have the new speaker that I wanna get mounted in. Surprisingly enough, the hole pattern here actually is really, really close to being able to work with this speaker. But the thing is, you generally want the speaker to be closer to the door panel if possible. That's part of the reason why even on this OEM speaker, you can see that the cone is way out here away from the mounting surface. So even though these could possibly just bolt directly to the door, I still want to make some adapter rings to space it away. A lot of times the factory speakers will even be a really odd shape on the outside for the adapter, but luckily in this case, we are nice and round, a perfect circle, which is going to make it easy to just use a template. If I did have a weird shaped speaker, what I would do is I would attach this to a piece of wood and then I would use a flush trim bit on the router. This way I could ride the bearing of the flush trim bit against the outside edge of our factory speaker and it would transfer the shape of the factory speaker using this cutter on the bottom so then I would have a piece of wood that I could use as a guide. But again, because we're nice and round on this, I can just use a circle template. There is something odd we're gonna have to account for though here, the inside of this template it's too small so it doesn't go all the way up to the speaker but that's no big deal we can easily fix that on the router as well by the way the speaker that I'm gonna be using here this might look like a component woofer but we can turn it into a coaxial. I'm gonna show you a little bit more in a little bit. Now really quick here, before we get into cutting those rings, I do wanna thank our monthly channel sponsor, Crutchfield. If you guys have been following along, I used Crutchfield to source all of the gear for the head unit install on this build because they make the whole process very easy with their vehicle selector tool that tells us exactly what wiring harnesses and fit kit pieces are needed. We can also see what speakers would fit without a ton of modification like I'm doing in this video, but we can also see what speaker wire harnesses are needed which helps us avoid cutting the factory speaker wires. Avoiding cutting those factory wires is really nice if we ever need to return the vehicle back to its stock form, we can easily plug in those OEM speakers. To learn more about Crutchfield and to take advantage of a special offer for you guys, car audio fabrication fans, check out the link here on screen or down in the video description. To get started with the cutting process, the first thing I'm gonna do is use double-sided template tape in order to stick that template to the piece. The material I'm using here is half-inch expanded PVC. I have a full video about this material in the corner of the screen. Now that the pieces are stuck together, I'm using a quarter inch spiral flush trim bit to trim this out. So now we have our first piece here and it perfectly matches our template, but we do need to make this whole size on the inside a little bit larger to accommodate the speaker. Right now, this inner diameter is only five inches and I need to increase it to five and five eighths. This is really easy to do on the router, so I need to increase the size of this hole by 5 eighths of an inch, so I divide that value by two, which is 5 sixteenths, which means I need to cut into each side 5 sixteenths. I helped Mobile Solutions design this eco tray kit because it really gives us a nice selection of bits for getting started. And while we have profiling bits here, one of the main things I like about this kit is that we can oversize or we can undersize using either the flush trim or the rabbit bit. In this case, I'm undersizing, which means I'm removing material in order to make the circle larger and I'm going to remove 5 16 of an inch of material on each side so I need to use this bearing along with this bit. I want to adjust the height of the cutter so that it's just past about a half thickness of the piece. So right about there, maybe a little bit more. 
that looks good to go. So now I'm gonna make that cutting pass on the inside of the ring. So that rabbiting bit leaves this step that you see in the material here, but the inside of that step is the new size that we need, so we can just use our flush trim bit again and remove that material. So here it is, friends, our new ring. Let's do a little test fit really quick with the speaker. Fits perfect. Now, as of right now, I only have a half inch of thickness. I need to get to a total of one inch of thickness. So does that mean that I need to go through all those steps again and make a second ring? Well, not quite, because now that I have the correct size of ring, what I can do is I'm gonna use some sandpaper and I'm gonna rough up the surface here and I'm also going to rough up this piece and I'm going to glue the two together using CA glue and then, since that's now permanently attached, I can take it over and flush trim again. Now we have our one inch of total thickness here with the doubled up rings, so the next thing I need to do is I need to transfer the mounting holes from our original speaker. I'm gonna do that using some transfer punches. These are the bolts I'm going to be using to hold the adapter to the door. So I need that bolt to sit down below this surface, that way the speaker can go on top. So I'm going to use a Forstner bit to create a countersink. And I measured the head of the bolt here to be smaller than 3 8 of an inch, so I know I can use a 3 8 inch Forstner bit. I can then use a normal drill bit to drill the rest of the clearance for that fastener. So now we have the fasteners and we can bolt this into the car. Before we can just bolt that adapter into the door though, we need to do something unique here that you may not encounter on every build, but you have to do it on this one. This car unfortunately had its stock speakers riveted into place. So what that meant is we had to drill out those rivets in order to even be able to remove the speaker. Once you drill out the rivets, unfortunately, there's no longer a connection here to use for a screw. So we're going to add one of these. This is a threaded rivet. I use this step bit to go up to the size that corresponds with our threaded rivet right here. In this case, it's a number four. Once that hole is made, I thread this onto this special tool here, which then allows me to use my drill to set the rivet in its spot. Now that the threaded rivets are in, I did a quick little test fit and things are looking good. There is one more additional issue. So the wiring on this vehicle, the plug normally plugged in on the outside of the speaker here. But with these aftermarket speakers, I need the wiring to come in from the back side. Now there is a grommet right here that we could potentially go through in order to get into the cavity, but I kind of want to avoid that because this area right here has the track for the window coming down. I don't want a chance that over time the speaker wire can potentially get in the way of that. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove a little bit of material on the ring itself using the router. This should work out well anyway because the sheet metal here has this little notch that helps them to correctly align the speakers at the factory. So if I just remove a a little bit of material away from the ring itself, I can have clearance for the speaker wires to get through there. So here's our makeshift groove on the back of the adapter. And again, if you didn't have a router, there's always other ways to do things like this. Like in this case, you could just use a file. It would take a little bit more time, obviously, to remove all that material, but it could be done. And you can also see that once we bolt this in place, it's going to allow for clearance for that wiring. Now, before I can just take this speaker and bolt it into the ring and mount it in the car, we do need to do some preparation because I want to make this speaker a coaxial. This speaker is the C3 series from JL Audio. And what's really cool about these is they can be converted from a component set to a coaxial set. You can see that right now we are in component configuration and you could use this and just flush mount it into a panel or you could do this adapter here to sit on top of a panel. But what we're gonna be using is this little guy here. We can remove that center plug and then we can plug in the tweeter and then add this in place. What I really like about this speaker having this ability is let's say you were installing into a vehicle that would require some custom work in order to mount the tweeter in a separate location. You could first try in coaxial configuration here and see if you're happy with the sound. And if you did want to try to do something a little bit more custom, it's not a big deal to swap that out and to add that plug back into the inside of the speaker and use this adapter. The other thing to consider is a lot of the gear that I've purchased over the years, when I go to get rid of a vehicle, I'll pull all the gear out and I'll put it into a new vehicle. This gives you some more flexibility for mounting in different ways in that newer vehicle. Just a couple things to consider. So in the front, we're going with these C3 components that are six and a halfs. And then in the rear, I'll be repeating that same process, but for a slightly smaller speaker, I'm using these C5 coaxials. 
So after applying some speaker gasket tape to the back side of the ring, I mounted it to the door and then I mounted the speaker into the ring. Now there is one more thing that we still need to do. We'll notice that the back side of the panel has this foam on it here. And what that foam will do is when the factory speaker is there, it helps to seal the gap between the speaker and the door panel. That way the majority of the sound is being directed through the grill. When we made the aftermarket ring, our spacing changed slightly because we wanted to allow more room for excursion so what I can do is I can measure the thickness of the factory ring here. It looks to be about one and a quarter inches. So what I can do to account for that gap is use this fast ring. I picked this up from Crutchfield. It's just a piece of foam with some adhesive on it that I can stick onto the panel. I'm gonna cut it to make up that difference. I'll cut it just over a quarter of an inch and then I can apply it inside here. After we're done, it's gonna look something like this. This gives us just a slight amount more thickness that we were looking for for this application. And with that, our new speakers are now installed so we can now move on to the next phase of this build. I need to build the custom subwoofer enclosure and we also need to get these amplifiers wired up and installed. To see those videos, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. We've passed 500,000, thank you guys so much. And also remember that I post updates over on my Instagram page, at Car Audio Fab. Next time you're picking out a car audio system, definitely check out show sponsor Crutchfield. You can learn more about them at the link here on screen or down in the video description. Also, a special thanks to Bryson, Mike, Ali, Jared, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all those guys for making these videos possible, and thank you for watching.